you just got in from Israel. Is that right? That is correct. You were in Israel. What were you doing in Israel? I was the ambassador of gay pride for Israel. Oh, congratulations. <laughs> That's very good. I learned a lot while I was there. What did you, what did you, what can you tell us? I've not been to Israel. What can you tell me about Israel? Well, it's a bucket list thing for me. I've always wanted to go, but I've definitely learned a lot. The first thing I learned was there are apparently no ugly women whatsoever in Israel. <laughs> None I, whatsoever. I have heard the women are extraordinarily beautiful. Unbelievable. Eat at, one would walk in the room and you'd think she's hot. The next one would walk in the room and was like, screw the other one. And <laughs> it, each one, I'm, I'm emigrating. Yeah, you're going. I'm emigrating. You're going. I'm done. I'm going. <laughs> Change faith. And you're I still move can't it. figure out how it happened because I saw plenty of ugly men. Yeah, really? <laughs> So where did the pretty women come, you know? I don't know, I don't know. Because the Catholic school, they taught me that men were involved. <laughs> <laughs> that's the first thing they tell you in Catholic school. I know, that's a, that's a joke. They didn't teach sex ed in they? Catholic school. I know. <laughs> they really, I, actually, they really didn't. Uh, this was my sex education class in Catholic school. They sat, sat me down, a nun sat down next, uh, in front of the class, right. and said, if you should ever slow dance with a boy, make sure there's enough room between you to throw a cat. <laughs> you throw a cat. <laughs> now, okay, I'm curious about something. You've obviously gotten very famous from the show. Do you get approached a lot for photographs? You must <laughs> constantly have people bothering you because you're very recognizable. You know, some people can blend in, but you can't blend in. I can't. I'm a little unforgettable. You're right. Some of the, like the women in our show are absolutely stunningly beautiful, all of them. Right. And then there's me. Right. And, uh, no. no, no, no. I'm saying you have a very distinct, you have exact, a very distinct look. Exactly. They can all walk around. Nobody, t nobody, Andrew. Hi. They, they can walk around. <laughs> Nobody bothers them, but I look exactly like me, so it's just nonstop. And what's really great is they see you, and immediately there's this huge smile on their face. My fiance says, calls me Bulldike Santa Claus. <laughs> <laughs> just the sight of me makes people happy. <laughs> and now, you, this is I, it's very hard for me to believe, but you were an openly gay comedian for 10 years before you came out to your family. <laughs> Right? <laughs> Not true. Before I came out to my parents, let's be clear. Okay. My parents. All right. Still, did you? Well, I mean, first of all, your parents did they did they have an inkling? I'm I mean, not. Okay. Let me put it this way. My yeah, my siblings and my mom just gave me nothing but attitude. Oh really? You're a lesbian? What are you gonna do now? Play softball? You know, yeah, like yeah. that kind of stuff. <laughs> and, but my father. <laughs> No clue. Your father had no had idea. No, look at me. <laughs> <laughs> look at me. He had no, no clue. Yeah. None. I mean, I'm uh, every day of my life. Look at me. Every day of my life, somebody calls me sir. Yeah. Every day of my life. The worst is in the gynecologist's office. That was <laughs>